Hey friend, welcome to my podcast, The Fit Soul. I'm your host, Amy Ramsey. In this podcast, we will be discussing soul-filled strategies to unleash your confidence, increase your energy, and all the things healthy lifestyle. If you're a Christian woman who is ready to reach your God-given potential, walk worthy of your calling with abundant joy and energy, girlfriend, you are in the right spot. I mean, you only have one life to live. You might as well maximize it. Buckle in and thanks for listening. Welcome back to the Fit Soul Podcast, the YouTube channel, wherever you are consuming this content. I want to say thank you for being here. I am uh, very grateful that you tune in and um, that you want to grow yourself uh, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, all through the lens of a biblical worldview. Thank you for hanging out here with me. Uh, last week, I was asked twice to share my story. And then again, this week, I'm like, okay, you know what? I really want to share my story with you. And this will probably be two episodes because nobody's got time to listen to a real long anything anymore. Do you agree with that or not? <laughs> Oh my goodness. But I have been in a place of deep reflection for a lot of reasons. Number one, at the time of recording, I'm turning 50 very soon. Um, also, I, so I've been thinking, I've been reflecting a lot really on the last decade of my life and all of the, the places that I've grown and so, so many things have happened exponentially this last decade. And I'm, I'm really want to share this with you because I want to empower you. I want to, uh, encourage you to, to grow as well. I think some of the reasons why I was so determined to move forward was because I was so broken at so many levels in my life. I have such a dramatic past and I, I realized recently as I was a guest on someone else's podcast, someone asked me a question and I just had this memory and I'm just going to warn you, I may cry on this episode. If you heard the episode previous to this, we're also walking through some uh, trauma with me, mostly as a mother, um, because my kid's father died last week. And it was tragic. It was sad. It was unexpected, but expected. So we're walking through very complicated grief because there was so much former abuse wrapped around that. And still someone that had all the potential in the world is no longer here. And so there's so much sadness around that, but it resurfaced a lot of memories. And so a lot of people don't know my story, the story of I think why I am so determined and I became so determined to move forward. So that's what I want to share with you today. The reason why I'm sharing this is truly from a place of um, authenticity to and vulnerability. So it can help you along your walk. There was, a, and I will share the exact story. There was a, an exact time and a place where the Lord really shared with me how, um, how much healing I needed to do and how much healing needed to take place. So I could be whole. And I didn't even know I could be whole because I was so broken, but so used to being broken. I was so used to hiding and shrinking. I didn't want to be known because I was so ashamed of the way my life was turning out before I turned 40. Now, when I turned 40, a lot of things shifted for me. So let me, let me just share with you just a little bit of uh, some context here. And, and what you're really going to hear is my story, but my transformational story. And if I can do this, you can do this for whatever area in your life. So I want you to be thinking of, even if you don't see yourself in this story at all, what I do want you to be thinking about are the areas in your life where you desire change. It could be in your physical. You are 
wanting to, to lose some extra weight, become healthier for all of the reasons you need to be. It could be in your spiritual walk. It could be that you are desiring more fullness, more authenticity, more intimacy with Christ and, ha- and, and, and operating from this place of overflow. And you're not feeling that right now. It could be that broken mindsets are, are have got you stuck and you're kind of sick and tired of that. You're going to find that in, in this story <laughs> every step of the way. And so what I want you to do, be, think, be thinking about right now is what area of your life do you desire change? And I want you to know anything is possible. Anything is possible. All right. So let me share a little, let me give you a little context from my, from my past. So like I said, everything kind of shifted for me when I was about 40, I was out of abusive situations. I married my current husband now, who is the love of my life, who is my soulmate. And he believes in me and encourages me. And I'm forever grateful for, for him. We are certainly not perfect. Uh, both of us came to this marriage uh, with work to do and we committed to it. Both of us came with brokenness and, and decided that this is it. We're going to make this work and that we're going to work on ourselves individually and together. So things, a lot of things shifted, just having some stability in my life. But up until that point, I pre was previously married. I'm going to share with you. I was actually married twice before I met Randy. And um, the first marriage my ex-husband and I were married for 15 years. We had two, have two beautiful children. And there was a massive amount of drama associated with that marriage complex. In fact, I met with a, a counselor, a therapist actually just yesterday, and she was explaining the dynamics when there's abuse and ministry with someone that's in um, a place of ministry. And that's where we were. He was in a place of ministry. We were, and he was a raging drug addict and alcoholic. And I, now looking back, I can see, okay, I was the enabler. I was in denial. It was textbook. Um, And I wanted to be, I wanted my family to work out. I wanted my, I, I didn't believe in divorce. So I did everything I could possibly do to save that marriage. But at the end of the day, my ex-husband, who's unfortunately is past, chose addiction. In fact, he chose addiction and died at age 53. It's tragic. Um, but it at the our end was filled with so much drama. It was just time for me to get out. It was time for me to leave. And I was so beaten down emotionally. Uh, And, and I was going to counseling to quote unquote Christian counselors who told me that I needed to stay, who told me I needed to stay in that situation because and I was just crying. But what about my children? God loves your children more than, than you do. I got bad advice, y'all. Like my gut was telling me to go, but I wanted to be obedient. And these counselors who I trusted, I was just, again, trying to make my family work. I didn't want to do the wrong thing. Were telling me to stay until certain situations happened and he was overdosed in the hospital and needed to go back and get to rehab again. And okay, now you can go. I was so broken that I couldn't even like stand. I I felt like I was just this stammering woman trying to do the right thing. And at the end of the day, now looking back and now with better counsel and um, hindsight, that was the Holy spirit inside of me saying, go, go, no woman. And if you're listening to this, no woman needs to live in abuse. You don't have to stay in abuse, in abuse. So anyway, before that, I had started to, I was finally starting to wake up. I was finally starting to recognize, okay, he's never going to change. And I have to get out of here. I can't live like this. I can't have these kids live like this. It was a, it was crazy. 
So I, I was the only one working. I became the breadwinner. I homeschooled our kids and we were this homeschool family. And, um, and now all of a sudden I'm needing to be the breadwinner of the family. There was a lot of changes taking place. My little one has autism. My, my son who's younger has autism and there were some special needs, but, um, I jumped in, I went to work. I'm a hustler by nature. So I, I, I started hustling and it was all I could do to save, pay the bills and then save some money to figure out whenever I was going to leave, how I was going to leave. And I was able to save $1,200. I'll never forget it. It was 12, $100 bills. And I had that money, but um, some this may be, this is going to be very hard to understand, but I couldn't keep any money. I couldn't keep anything in the house because at this point he was just, I don't know how to say this. The only word I know to use is he was compl- beyond unstable. He was just crazy and um, dangerous, but he searched through everything. All of my phone records, I was convinced my car was bugged, whether it was or wasn't. I don't know. I was convinced it was because he could, he knew my conversations. He followed. I had completely isolated myself. I mean, I, I accept ownership, to, more ownership in this situation. Now, um, at first, he, he, if I wanted to save my marriage, then I couldn't talk to all of our friends, all of our family. And so I was isolated. And I realized now that that was a choice. I didn't have to do that, but I did. So I saved back to that $1,200. I saved that money. It was everything I could do to save it and pay the bills and keep my head above water to, to try to take care of um, the kids and all of their needs as well. He would look for the money. He knew I had some money. So I had $1,200. I had a spare cell phone that was charged. At this point, I had gotten help from a friend of mine that my brother took, put me in contact with that had been in a very similar situation. And um, she said, you need to get a phone. You need to have it a separate phone. You need to have it charged up. You need to be ready to go at any point in time. And you need some, you know, some money to leave. So all that I had all of that. And this one particular day, he just was uh, very drunk and high or both or one or the other. I don't know. He hit me with a car trying to leave with our kids. I was trying to stop him and he took my phone. He took my wallet. He took my purse. And I didn't know if he took that $1,200 or not. And I was left as this one particular day. I was, it was so, it was the most helpless feeling I've ever actually felt in my life. I was sitting outside of our house as he was gone with my children and he was in zero condition to drive zero condition. He took my phone. There was not another phone to call 911 um, in the house at that time, in that moment. And there was, I didn't have any money. I didn't have any anything. And I was just left there helpless, praying that my kids were okay and that they came back safely. I went inside the house thinking, oh my gosh, he took that $1,200 for us to get out. He's taken it and now he's gone. And I went and looked and my hiding place where he was looking He didn't find it. It was in my closet in a random jacket in a random inside pocket of uh, my jacket. He didn't find it. He would look through all of those clothes and he didn't find it. It's like, oh, thank God. And I sat there helplessly in my room and I looked and I said, Lord, where do I hide this? This is a crazy man and I got to get out of here. I've got to get my children out. Sometimes people think, oh my gosh, you just need to leave. How do, women just need to leave. They need to leave those situations. It's, it's complicated. Uh, I hope that you can hear that in this story to leave with your children. I mean, you can go to a, a shelter. That was my option to go to a woman's shelter with kids. And then what? That, that, I, I didn't have an, an, another place to go. So then what? Go back to an angrier spouse? and take more abuse. Like it just didn't work that way. It was, it had to be a strategic plan. 
anyway, I came back in and I will remember thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? Lord, keep my children safe. And I was in my bedroom. I was looking forward, just trying to figure out a place to hide these 12, $100 bills. It's my, like my ticket to freedom. I'm telling you, I held onto it tightly. And I saw a lamp in front of me. It was Hunter Green, had a cream shade. I saw this lamp in front of me and the scripture, thy word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. I looked at that lamp. I took the bottom of the lamp out. I was able to shove that money up in that lamp, replace the lamp back onto the table. And he never found it. We ended up leaving with nothing on a train in the middle of the night with the two kids, one very angry. And, uh, and my little guy, he wasn't angry. He was like, okay. Um, but it was very emotional. It was very sad. It was very hard. It was very traumatic when we left. It was very dramatic when we left and we left on a plane and on a train in the middle of the night with that $1,200. And while we were gone, he ended up selling every bit of furniture that we had um, and left me literally with nothing. I was left with not even vital records. I didn't even have vital records of my children. It was devastating, but I started over with on food stamps. I was homeless. I was broke. Obviously $1,200 doesn't go very far, but more than broke, I was broken, incredibly broken. The thing that I had that kind of held me together was um, three things was my faith, my family and friends, and then also fitness. That was one of the few things I could control in my life was my, my fitness. And um, I'd always been in fitness and uh, a teacher and instructor at different gyms and such, but those were the things that I held on to. So I want to fast forward just a little bit is that I got back on my feet and um, made a massive mistake. I reconnected with someone that was someone from uh, actually our past and ended up in a rebound marriage. I wasn't ready for it. And very, again, classic textbook. I was in over my head in another abusive marriage with another abusive man. And I found this out in three weeks into our marriage. He held me down in the bathroom and was physical. And um, it was, it was not good. I learned in the first three weeks, oh my gosh, this man is abusive too. What am I going to do? That marriage didn't last long. <laughs> I was getting stronger at this point. And, um, but I didn't leave that one unscathed either. And so. I left. So by the end of my thirties is what I'm trying to get to. I was so uh, broken. Here I was not only divorced once victim of abuse, divorced twice, but I opted in for this one. But again, another victim of abuse. Um, I was filled with regret, remorse, and shame. What I had done to my children what I had allowed them to walk through because of the choices I made. Oh my gosh. So by the end of my thirties, I moved to Mississippi. I did end up meeting. I've already shared with you. I met Randy and we got married when I turned 40 actually. And um it was the first time I'd had a, a supportive loving person in my life that empowered me to to um to be me and wanted me to be me and encouraged me to get the healing that I needed to. So that was such a gift and such a blessing. But by the time I was 40 years old, even though I was in now a stable environment, I was with a stable person. I had so much shame and so much guilt wrapped in my life. And that's how I operated my life. I, um, I hid 
I learned to hide and shrink. I started, I started doing that in my thirties when I was in that abusive marriage and I didn't want anybody to ask me how I was. I would just hide and shrink. And I didn't really, I didn't want to be known. Um, and then when I was in my forties, now things are stable. I found myself still in that place. I had so many broken beliefs about really who God was even though I went to church, I've gone to church all of my life. And I know the scripture, I was in Bible studies, even leading Bible studies, facilitating Bible studies, but I was still hiding and shrinking. And if you're listening to this and you're like, wow, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe I'm hiding and shrinking. Maybe I'm playing smaller than I should. Maybe, (laughs) maybe there's part of me in there that doesn't want to be known. I just want to ask you to question yourself, maybe what broken beliefs do you have? So I, I had brokenness about being forgiven by God. I walked with so much shame and condemnation because I thought he was just ashamed of me. You're not supposed to get divorced. And here I am divorced twice. Even though I had understood, I had, I had learned, I had read, I had heard about the identity in Christ. But even though I had listened to it, even though I, I had read about it, what, what I was reading was not congruent with my heart and the way I felt. Okay. I'm all of these things. Mm, okay. I didn't feel it. What I started to understand is that I was, um, what I was, un, what I was feeling was deep, deep levels of guilt and shame. And it kept me stuck in cycles. Thank you so much for being here. Now, listen, join me next week and we'll wrap up that story. And thank you for just celebrating my 50 shades of pink. my uh my birthday month this has been an exciting year turning 50 has been a big milestone and i appreciate you being here with me and being on this little piece of a podcast the internet the youtube the you name it so thank you so much i share my story because i know that it can help it has, it helps women it helps them overcome those things that have been holding them back and if If it can help one person, then it's worthy of sharing. So if this has helped you, I would love to hear from you. You can um, hit, you know, email me at amy at the fitsoul.com or shoot me a DM or something, however we're connected. And I would love to hear how it helps you because I want you to walk worthy. Remember, you can change your life. You are capable of absolute transformation that you are necessary. You are needed in the kingdom of God and his economy. He is as a Christian, as a child of God, you are a daughter of the King. You have birthrights. And I am so passionate that we walk worthy of that, that we walk in that instead of something that's beneath our birthright. It just, things that have held us back. So I want you to know who you are and whose you are. Um, And if you need some help doing that, just check out the show notes or hop over to my website, thefitsoul.com. I've got resources for you to help you along your journey. All right, guys, see y'all next week. Girlfriend, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I'm so honored you come back every week and that you share the Fit Soul podcast with your friends and family. Every time you share my podcast on Instagram or Facebook, I do a little happy dance. Make sure you subscribe to the Fit Soul Podcast where you'll never miss an episode. You can go to Podcast, Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode release. And just know, I truly love bringing you excellent content and great guest to provide you motivation and faith inspiration to help you walk worthy. And one of the ways you can help me is to go and leave the Fit Soul Podcast a review. If you have just a moment, would you please go over and leave a review for the Fit Soul Podcast? Thank you again. I love you. And here is your reminder. You are worthy. Until next time. Bye-bye.